Perfect. Your shirt matches the house. Let's go around here. In today's exciting episode, we look at roofs like that, rusty roofs, and how we can repair them without just throwing them out. My garage roof is really rusty, and we're going to try and save it. The sun is shining. Welcome to another exciting episode. Let's pull this roof off again, shall we? Okay, so we got off to a great start in the last exciting episode. We got most of this half of the roof up and then underlay, and this scaffold that this camera is sitting on right now was set up by Gaston and myself. I'm on my own today, but I think, I think I'm gonna be fine because I've just gotta pull off these one, two, maybe four or five sheets, do the same thing I did last time, put the mesh down, put the underlay down, and then chuck them down again. Now I've got one thing that is on the back of my mind and that is the rain. It's supposed to be raining this whole week. So this is the only window that I have. So the main thing is get rid of this paper, continue that mesh, and get the underlay down and the roof back on as well. And then we can look at treating this rust. I've got this stuff called rust converter. Apparently you just paint it on and it turns the rust to primer. That sounds like a miracle product. But um, let's put this underlay down first. Now I have considered Putting a skylight in here, how much nicer would that be, right? But believe it or not, it's actually an issue when I'm filming videos. I'm gonna film a lot of videos in here, and if I have a light that big behind me, well, the camera needs to adjust like that in order to get me in the shot, and then everything behind me is all blown out like that. I already have this challenge with the windows behind me, and that's why I often film in this direction. So the windows are going like that, and then see, I've got the black behind me, and everything's, you can see everything. So, unfortunately, we need to put a roof on here. And because I'm cheap, we're gonna put the same roof back on. got to admit one thing a lot of people said in the last video which way you should put your paper your building underlay they should say you should do it not vertical the way I've done it but horizontal the opposite direction of the roofing iron and I agree you should that's a lot better and like people pointed out if the roof leaks it's gonna hit that underlay and it's gonna go down rather than potentially going under the lap and in but the reason I made the choice was it's a lot easier to put down I'm taking up sheets at a time, and then I can put underlay down one strip at a time. If I went across the way, I would have to take the whole roof side off, and then go end to end, and put the whole roof down. If there's a bunch of us working on this together, then yeah, we could totally do that, but this is my house. I'm working on it by myself, so I'm not going to do that. Having said all that, down here where the roof gets flat, definitely have to go horizontal on that one. I'm getting away with it up here because the roof is on an angle so the chances of the water tracking in and going sideways are less and uh, as long as I paint this roof nice get it all sealed I should be good A 
underlay, 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 underlay on. Let's put the roofing on before this rain arrives. If you ever do this job um, and you're pulling old nails out or old screws out, make sure the new screws that you replace them with are thicker in diameter. That way you're not gonna get a leak in the hole because all you're doing is making the hole a little bit bigger for the new screws. If I got a screw the same diameter as the nails I pulled out, there's a higher chance that it'll leak. And you gotta be careful that you don't over tighten the rubber washers because you can easily split them or just spread them out. And then they won't seal the joint. I've gotta put this roof on. Last sheet, Mike. Last sheet. Not bad, eh? Mike is my next door neighbor, and he's been living in that house since 1962. And he's a builder, was a builder. My house is this one here, obviously. And it's had one renovation in the time since it was built, since 1962. And Mike did that renovation in the 70s. So I've been asking him all these questions about my house. I'd love to film him, but he's old school. He doesn't want to be on camera. Fair enough. So yeah, he was watching me pull the roof off before. And he's still living here. It's crazy. He built that house as well. Well, so far, so good, not a drop, but I knew that, come on, perfect, it was raining all last night, that is dry, just a stain, <laughs> I have a feeling a mechanic used to own this place, we just got the other half to do now, but I need to make a flashing first, or we'll get a flashing made. So clearly we have a rotten weatherboard here, which I've known about for a while. And that's why I got those weatherboards from my friend Raymond. So now I can cut that out and put a, put a fresh one in there. But first we're gonna try this rust converter on the roof. It's been a few days now, the weather's been great. Had a little public holiday in, in between. So it's dry up there. So let's go try the rust converter. I have to say I'm pretty skeptical, like the idea that you can just paint it on and then it converts rust. Seems like some kind of magic, but uh, let's give it a try. Apply to any lightly rusted or correctly prepared metal surface to neutralize rust and convert it to a tough primer in one easy step. This isn't an ad, I bought this rust converter, so if it sucks, I'll let you know. Let's try it out. Child proof. There we go. Okay, you can see here where I've just applied the rust converter. It's got a kind of bluish tint to it. And then here is one of the areas where I first applied it and you can see it's gone all clear. And it almost looks as if we've cleaned it with this rust converter. But I can still see rust. So it's interesting. Up here, that's dried off a bit as well. And then over here, the rust has gotten darker. So interesting stuff. You know what else is interesting? What's that? Using Squarespace to build your website. <laughs> So 
Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Squarespace helps you stand out by giving you an awesome website building platform that is really easy to use. Squarespace has a great e-commerce system, so you can just focus on selling whatever it is you sell, whether it's services or products. Squarespace also have a new video studio app, so if you want to share videos about your products or services, you can do that on your website. When Jess and I set up the website, we really appreciated the portfolios and galleries that are built in. It's really easy to drag and drop files in and make your business look professional. But don't take my word for it. Squarespace also offer a free trial so you have nothing to lose. And then once you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and thanks to Bobby Franks, I think it is, that I just bought this coffee from. That was very delicious. Two coats of that rust converter that I've put on now and hopefully it's started to darken. That's the aim of the game. And then we can put a primer on top. First I want to film my intro. Hopefully there's a rusty roof around here. Don't mind if you do, eh Jess? Man, it's gonna be my lunch. <laughs> I fucking love Fijos. Yeah? Oh yeah. Fijos are funny. There's really such a limited time for when they're still good. Hmm. You're not gonna turn around and demand some of my Fijos, eh? You know? I will eat this. I would eat this whole bucket. You've even got a Fijo sack. All right. After 24 hours since the second coat of rust converter, after a haircut, after an application of sunblock, let's see just how good the rust converter did. Yeah, look how dark it is. We've got a rusty colour to it, but it is sort of dark around the sides. Oh, look at that. Interesting. So where there isn't rust, it's left that sort of yellowy, yellowy colouring there. But where there is rust, it's very dark. That's what we want. All right, so I had to look on Wikipedia how that rust converter works, and this is what it says. Rust converters are chemical solutions or primers that can be applied directly to an iron or iron alloy surface to convert iron oxides, rust in brackets, uh, into a protective chemical barrier. These compounds interact with iron oxides, converting them into an adherent black layer that is more resistant to moisture and protects the surface from further corrosion. I mean, that's basically what it said on the bottle. I'm happy with it. That's effectively become a primer. But what I am sitting on here is some metal shield primer from Dulux. And they gave it to me. So Dulux kindly hooked us up with this paint. Um, they didn't pay me or anything, but they gave me this paint for free. And I'm going to use it to prime the whole garage. So we'll eventually have the garage painted the same color as the house. And we're going to figure out what color that is on the garage. So yeah, it's nice to have the garage be a testing ground for the house. Oh, much tidier than I thought. So although this is just a shed, this is pretty typical of New Zealand houses. <laughs> like my house has the same roof as my shed. No different, completely exactly the same. When I'm looking around here right now, pretty much every roof I'm looking at is corrugated iron, just like this. I think there's, oh, there's like a concrete tile, but most of the time it's corrugated iron in New Zealand. So there we go, rust converter is kind of like a primer, and then I'm adding this primer. This, this roof should be pretty invincible. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of uh, Scott Brown Painting. In the next episode, I'll probably use some timber again.
Doing a great job, Jess. Oh, thanks, babe. You're doing a great job.